Okay. Bones, yes. Let's go. So, my suggestion to you is to have everything out that you need, like all the, you don't necessarily need all like the tools. You can run around and get tools. I usually run around like a crazy person to get tools. But definitely all your ingredients, except for your butter. Leave your butter in the fridge for now. Um, you can leave the milk too if you don't want the milk to go bad. But take everything dry out. Take any rings off because you're going to be like getting dirty. So you don't probably want those in rings. Uh, unless you don't care, in which case, you know, give her. I don't care. Um, but yeah, definitely have all your dry ingredients out. One of the things that I do when I'm baking, because sometimes I get distracted, especially with somebody who like likes to distract me. Um, whoa, whoa. <laughs> what? Excuse me. Usually what I do is as soon as I use an ingredient, I put it away. So that's my way of remembering that I've used everything that I need to use. Because sometimes like you don't want to forget salt. You don't want to forget sugar. You don't want to do things that would, you know, ruin everything. So have everything out. And then as soon as you use it, put it away. And that way you are always, uh, you always know that you are done. And count out loud. Yes. And count out loud because, you know, sometimes and you don't. It's bad. <laughs> that's when you have to remake things because that's happened. Um, so yeah, count out loud when you're when you have things, but then make sure that you put things away. Get your ingredients and the thing else and push it all around in chaos. I mean, that's fair. Usually I don't have like all of this out. Like I'll get my measuring cups out, but I don't like usually I'm running around. I'm like, oh, I need a knife. Oh, I need a spoon. Oh, I need. But I figured like I should probably be organized, you know. Um. For your measuring cup, if you just have like a singular measuring cup, like a, you know, like a regular measuring cup, that's fine. Um, I have these like little spoons because I find them easier. But if you have just a measuring cup, that works perfect. Yeah. If your oven takes a super long time to heat up, you can turn it on right now. Otherwise, you can wait a little bit. I'm going to wait because ours, like I said, only takes five minutes. Um, so usually I can leave it until a little bit later. But it depends on your oven. But yeah. Other than that, hopefully you're ready. And you get to bake, and you will have some amazing scones after. I'm excited for the scones. Um, so you want a big bowl, so ideally something that you can um, put a bunch of flour into and work in, because otherwise uh, it's going to be everywhere. So you don't want to go everywhere. So a bigger bowl, um, hopefully. If not, then at least a flat counter space you can work on um, and throw everything in if you do it that way. Uh, okay, so start with your flour. If I follow the fatty way, do I need to preheat the microwave? Uh, you might need to, yeah. Sometimes microwaves are finicky, you know? <laughs> um, so we need two and a half cups of flour. Again, if you're using a measuring cup, one of the things is if you're using an actual like glass measuring cup and you're pouring it in, my suggestion would be to like tap the bottom just to make sure, because if you're pouring it in, it tends to have air bubbles in it, and then you don't quite get enough like flour that you need. Sugar is usually okay, but flour tends to be a little bit trickier. Um, because I'm using scoops, I can control it a little bit better in like smaller quantities. But yeah, if you definitely have like the big old measuring cups and you're pouring it in, just tap the bottom and then make sure you're like lined up with it. That's my suggestion. So we need two and a half cups, and I have a one cup one that's broken. Just ignore the fact that it's broken because nobody loves me. And a half cup because two and a half. Um, if you're using measuring like cups like these, um, have like a knife or something that you can just smooth out the top just so that it's not like, you know, heaping over. You want it to be flush. And count out loud because as we all know, mistakes happen, you know? So... Make sure it's full. I'm going to get flour everywhere, just FYI, guys. Smooth it out. So you have a completely flat cup of flour. That's one. You need a second one. How important is it that it's exactly two and a half cups? Um, if you have, like, a little bit extra, like, especially if you're using a glass measuring cup, sometimes it's, like, a little bit off, but not necessarily... It's not, it's not the worst thing in the world. It might, like just, if, it might just change like how dry it is. Like, yeah, it might be a little bit drier. You, scones tend to be on the drier side anyway. So like I don't make sure like it's not rounded because like that's a lot. But like for example, I have some like left over on my hand. It's going to go in. I don't really care. Yeah. Um, more precise would be if you actually weigh it. But like 
most people don't weigh it to be honest um if you do get into two. baking though um a nice little scale is actually pretty cheap on amazon yeah we got a scale recently and it was really nice and i have this lovely flower container from julie i got for christmas and it's great because it has a little thingy and it's airtight and it's great no but for real uh, i need uh, two and a half see guys distraction a scale um, half a little food scale is is very cheap like I think it's like 20 bucks uh, Here, yeah. on Amazon. No, I think on Amazon US. I think it's like Half. 20 bucks. <laughs> Julie. <laughs> people use glass measuring cups for dry ingredients. Uh, people who don't have anything else. Yeah, I've done it. Like when I didn't have anything else, I just had one measuring cup and I use it for dry, for wet, whatever I had. Um, I honestly still don't often change because like I just don't care. But there are specific ones you can get for dry and for wet. But again, most people, when you're only having like, I don't know. I just don't tend to care. When you know? you're not baking a lot too. And even if you are, I'm just um, lazy. Um, it's just because they fit differently, right? If you have, for example, if you have um, one cup of like almonds, you're going to have a different amount of almonds than if you had a cup of water. Like it's, it's like going, like a different weight, I mean. Um, so that's why usually... If you go by weight, it's a little bit more precise. Um, but usually, honestly, I I don't usually make a difference, especially if it's something like almonds or chocolate chips. I'm probably going to put a little bit extra anyway just to make it yummier. So next thing we need is we need to put in baking powder. So baking powder is what we have that really helps to rise. Because we're not using, it doesn't have yeast, this combined with the butter is what makes it the scone. So take your, your baking powder, you need one tablespoon. Um, again, this is something that I would make sure is very flat. Um, don't have like a heaping table, like tablespoon of it. So take your tablespoon. And what, what, what would happen if you have too much? I think this is just the, it, it creates air, right? That's the so this is what, powder? no, this is what makes it rise. <laughs> have the same magic brand baking Twin, powder? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, we do. It is the only one. So I tend to just like shake it because like sometimes I don't want to run over to get a knife to like flatten it because I'm lazy. Um, but if you really want to be precise, you can use a knife. But I just like kind of shake it until it's flush and then pour it in. So do you know what, like what, because this is, this is what makes it rise, right? Yeah. So this is what like... What this does is when it like combines with everything else, this is what it is kind of like your activator. It's like the yeast and bread mm. is the thing that actually makes it poof. Um, the thing that actually creates the air bubbles though is the butter because the butter melts and leave like holes. So that's what makes it like flaky and holy and airy, whereas this helps it to like poof. So it's a combination of the two that make it fantastic. And yes, Steph, this is like teaching a board game. Kind of. Um, my baking powder, because it says to keep it in a cool, dry place my entire life, I've always kept it in the fridge. Um, it's just something, I don't think you have to, but. I think, I think that's a, I don't know if that's a Canadian it's, thing too, but I think everybody does that Well, it's here. like the universal, <laughs> if it has to be in a cool, dry place, what's a cool, dry place? The fridge. You know? Yeah. But. Weirdin, uh, that might explain your previous, uh, scone attempt. She thinks she used a. A teaspoon. teaspoon. Yeah, you definitely want to have the full tablespoon of baking powder. Because a teaspoon is what, three times <laughs> less? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would uh, be a flat scone. And I think, Julie, you can keep it in the cupboard. Again, I think that's just more of like a, my mom taught me it went in the fridge. Like my baking soda is in the cupboard. I don't know, man. I don't know. <laughs> oh, oh, shit. I don't know how, you didn't actually talk about that, but baking soda and baking powder. They're different. Are different things. Yeah. yeah. So if you don't somebody want soda. if somebody just put baking soda into their flour, please restart. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so the next thing you want to put in is salt. Um, so you need a, a half teaspoon of salt. Here's my half teaspoon. Um, I make a giant mess because I don't have like a like a thing to pour it in and whatever. Um, <laughs> Everybody's in agreement here, I think. Um, so what I tend to do is like hold the spoon over the sink and just like pour until it's full and then Defu gets really mad at me because there's the sink is literally just full of salt. She does not know how to pour salt. Okay, really it doesn't come out well, okay? It it's not my fault. Fine. It's fine. 
Uh, whatever salt you have, whether it's table salt, sea salt. Um, if you don't have a half a teaspoon pepper. measuring thing. Um, uh, if you don't have a half teaspoon, you can fill a teaspoon halfway-ish. Yeah. Um, it just helps to give it some that extra flavor so it's not just sweet, sweet, sweet. Um, baking powder does contain baking soda, yes. That is true, but if you put a but lot of baking soda It's because no if you baking have powder. baking soda, you also have to add other things. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Uh, but I mean, also with soda, sometimes when the fridge makes for a fresh fridge. No, yes, I do have baking true. soda in the fridge to take out smell from the fridge, but I don't use it for baking because then it'll be full of like nasty smells, you know? Um, also, if if you don't have a, a half teaspoon, te is that a tablespoon teaspoon? Teaspoon. So a half teaspoon, eyeballing is fine because worst case scenario, if you have like a little bit more than half, maybe you'll be able to be, it'll be a bit saltier. But yeah. Because you're making such a large amount of flour, it's not actually that. that It'll important. be fine. It's more, um, you don't want to have like a full teaspoon or like a full tablespoon of salt. It'll be too salty. You need a very thorough nail cleaning after this. <laughs> half teaspoon. And again, if you only have uh, like a regular teaspoon, fill it up halfway. Um, the salt is not, you know. And super, super uh, precise. I don't think I'm the only one here to the TSP. I never remember which is which. TSP is teaspoon because TBSP is tablespoon. Yeah, but it, it's the worst. I wish they just wrote it out. Oh, okay, Cashel, sure. I've done that many times. When you just like keep, I what I sometimes do is like put it, grind it into like a small bowl um, and then scoop it out. If I'm like really not feeling it, I'll just try grinding it directly into the spoon and then, again, I make a mess with salt. But, yeah. like... Kestrel? I just make messes with salt, you know? <laughs> the sea salt grinder. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. The thing is, like, half a, half a teaspoon is, is not not a large amount. Like, it's... No, it's, like, a, it's still a good amount. But... Yeah. Well, it's compared to the amount of flour you're, you're looking at nothing here. Yeah. Ladle equals ladle. <laughs> it's actually as pronounced ladle. Um, so if you have, <laughs> if you have a spoon that you want to mix with, you can. If you want to just use like, um, you know, your measuring spoon, you can. Uh, I didn't get a spoon, so I'm gonna get a spoon. I started keeping a bowl of salt instead because you cook so much. Yeah, that works. I just have a grinder that stays beside the stove, but. You know, I have this for baking. A <laughs> ladle to mix the chicken ingredients? <laughs> yes. Um, so, yeah, so you're just kind of mixing uh, to incorporate everything so that it's, like, a little bit one and not just, like, stuff on top of flour. Um, Make sure everything you're using is dry. <laughs> Don't use a wet spoon to mix this. Yeah, <laughs> that'll be interesting if you do that. Okay. Again, you wanna... just kind of mixing it. Could, could we get a show of hands to see uh, who puts salt in properly and hasn't used baking soda? <laughs> I think they're doing okay. No, I, I think, think everybody is great. doing. Yeah, I think everybody is doing okay. Um. So at this point, I now have a Tupperware reed cup of ground salt. There you go. Perfect. That's actually that's actually useful. And what Rin's? Oh, Rin has a, a. It's funny. My my friend has a bowl of salt too. I just. I never did it, and I don't know. It's hot today. Don't let the sweat on your hand <laughs> drop in the mixing bowl yet. Yes. Bones. You. Yes. <laughs> so now is the opportune time to go grab your butter from the fridge because you do want it to be as cold as possible. Um, some people actually freeze the butter and then, um, like, cheese grate it in. Because that's too cold for me, um, I just leave it in the fridge as long as possible and then take it out. Um, but basically the colder it is, the better. If you don't have air conditioning and you currently live in a warm environment, I would say that once we're done mixing and getting it ready for the oven, maybe just throw them in the fridge for a few minutes just to kind of harden that butter back up. Cause that butter, when it melts in the oven is like I said, what makes those bubbles and makes it so flaky and yummy. Um, so definitely try and keep your butter as cold as possible throughout, especially if you have like clammy hands. Just put it back in the fridge for a little bit after a while. So, things and, to keep in mind. And maybe at some point soon should be oven turning on time? Um, I usually turn it on once I've formed it. 
But we have a quick oven. We have a quick oven. So if you have a not quick oven, yeah, you might you can turn on anytime. It would it would be a good idea to turn on your oven now, especially if you're talking like 20 to 30 minutes, because I know some older yeah. ovens take quite a while to warm up. Um, it doesn't need to go up that high though. Um, uh, it's 425. Okay. Uh, for, 425 mind. Fahrenheit That's for your high. oven, or 220 Celsius if you uh, go by that, which we don't even we go by Fahrenheit here, but. Because Canada, you know, but what yeah, so about? definitely if you if you're looking at 20 30 minutes for your oven um, Yeah, it's a good idea to start it now um, Okay, so this takes eight tablespoons of butter if you have one of like the giant bricks You might have to like I honestly just use the measurements on the side which work out super well um, If you don't have measurements on the side, then you can take your tablespoon and actually like scoop it make it flat put it in um, the thing I find about doing that is you really have to like squish it down to make sure that it's like in again You don't want air you want you want the butter that that's what makes it yummy. Okay, Jenny <laughs> for 25 <Jenny>. free to meat <laughs> Amazing. Um, so because on mine, I don't know if you I don't do you can you zoom in a little bit? Uh, you have that capability? Yeah, wait, wait if I go okay, it's gonna look a little bit weird, but if I do I can move it that Cool. Um, so on mine, because I have, uh, it's a box that comes with four sticks. Um, it actually uses the whole stick because it's eight tablespoons, which is uh, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, or a half cup if, uh, if you're going with uh, other, other measurements. Um, but yeah, it's super easy because it comes with a single small little stick. It's not like the big honkers. Um, I find the big honkers really hard to bake with. Great for cooking, sucky for baking, because it's kind of more difficult to measure. But these are really well. Sorry, it's really cold. So I don't <laughs> it is also a, it's a quarter. It's a quarter thing of, of butter usually. So I think they're usually the same. Yeah. I'm gonna go back up. Yeah. Um, so if you do have the big brick, you're only looking at a quarter. So I mean, you can eyeball a quarter if you don't have any way of easily measuring it. Yeah. You know, cut in half. Cut in half. Boom. That's a quarter. Um, so open up your butter, get it on your plate. I this is at the back of the fridge, so it's like Oh, it's ice nice cold. nice and cold. Oh yeah, it's cold. I have a thing, I don't like touching butter. This go this recipe doesn't go well oh, for that. This but is this is my cue. Yeah, this is your cue to do some garbage for me. The garbage is on the other side of the thing I kicked earlier, so yeah. um. <laughs> chicken fat if you don't want butter. Oh bones. Um you so here's what? one of the things that like you want to cut the butter into itty bitty tiny pieces. So that's what I was saying when some people will grate it with a, with a, um, just as fractions. <laughs> as it is here for math. I'm here for the math. Um, so yeah, some people actually grate it with a, uh, cheese oh my grater. goodness, cheese grater. Thank you. That's actually not a bad idea. Um, it, once it's frozen, you can't do it from the fridge. It'll just mush. Don't try it. Yeah. Um, I literally just like cut it into chunks and like the smaller, the better. So pastry blender, uh, you can, once it's in the batter, you don't want to use it right now. It's not going to do you very good. Um, so just cut it, take a butter knife or take a, a sharp knife or... A potato masher would also mash it more than cut it. Yeah. Because you want little cubes. Yeah, you want, like, I just cut it into little slivers like this. And then, like, cut it half again. I think that's that's the key is you don't want it to be mashed potato. It just like moves. Oops, oh, sorry. that's the loudest noise of all time. Sorry. My, so my laugh like is cut infectious. It. <laughs> <gasps> the salt container, I don't get to see it. Oh, wait, I can hook you up. Oh my God, that is actually the cutest thing ever. Oh, it has a lid. I love that. that my is, friends is just open. That is actually. Oh, the I want thing one ever. of those. Can I have one of those? Uh, anybody wondering? Uh, it is on Discord. If you want to join our Discord, any new faces? There's a lot of food talk because um, yeah. even though we're generally a board game stream, we pretty much only talk about food. So generally, uh, you can just leave it at this point if you want. Kind of cut into rectangular slivers. Um, if you don't have a um, a pastry blender um i would suggest probably cutting it more even if you do i was just cutting it more thank you for the follow i can't read it because it's really small in mo live welcome to the channel thank you hopefully you can follow along for baking our scones we're a little bit ahead but it's not too far in there's the recipe um 
Let me drop that if you want to try your own scones at home. And they don't need to be even. They just need to be cut into tiny pieces. So if some of them are like really odd shaped, it honestly doesn't matter. Your knife skills are not being tested today. Um, once you are at this point, it just goes into your lovely flour mixture. Um, and uh, you're just, this is where you're going to get messy. So here's where I would say if you have a ring on or... If you want to drink a water first. Yeah, you're going to have to, to do some work and then you're going to have to wash your hands in a bit. Okay, so make sure you're ready for that. Um, <laughs> Maybe wait a little bit too. <laughs> just get everybody up to speed. <laughs> you know. Um, so yeah, basically put it in and then you're just going to mush it. Or if you have a husband handy, very true. Twin... I mean, also, you're big twin. Yeah, so, he, he can do everything you know, today. You know? He's the lovely mom. So I will say, I have this pastry blender, but, like, I'm pretty sure... No worries, Keshul. I'm pretty sure I bought it at, like, the dollar store. Okay? Um, like, it's... Oh, I, I don't it's, think so. I'm trying to remember where we got that. It's not amazing. Okay? It works, and it's oh. fine. Mistakes were made. Oh, <laughs> yeah, Kestrel. <laughs> Oh. Oh, that's fine. So you can actually use a cheese grater if you have that. That would work great. Like, or, or you can attempt to just like strong arm it and cut it. But yeah, just use a sharp knife if you have one. Be yeah. careful. But yeah, a cheese grater would be perfect. Yeah, if you have a cheese grater, just use that, honestly. Um, so yeah, my my blender, it... <laughs> sometimes when I'm using it, will just like pop apart. <laughs> so it's not great. It's fine. Um, if you don't have one, you can use a fork and like mash the butter, you're basically trying to break it up so that the butter becomes like really, really tiny pieces and you're incorporating in with the flour. Um, so the smaller the pieces, the better. Oh, we started cutting, can't go back. No worries, <laughs> that's cool, Kestrel. Um, so the smaller the pieces, the better. And um, the more incorporated, the better. So that's kind of the, the, the moral. Uh, use your fork, use your hands and mush it together. Use a pastry blender, um, whatever you got. And I think the goal, too, again, is you don't want mashed potatoes. You just want to incorporate it. Yeah, exactly. So if I'm taking it and Kestrel, we'll, we'll wait for you. Don't worry. Um, you're just kind of smushing it around, making it into smaller pieces. Again, you can use a fork. I was too lazy yesterday when I was making it, and I just used a fork uh, and then my hand. So whatever you got. Um, she says too lazy, but I bet you it would be easier to use a fork right now. Um, I don't find it is. It's possible, but I don't think it's easier. I mean, that thing you're holding looks flimsy as heck. Okay, well, that's because oh. mine is a little bit ghetto, but like... Okay, wait, wait, we do have a picture. You have a picture? Yeah. <laughs> yes! Yeah, weird, and that's what... It'll look like that for all of us Weirdin at some point. Weirdin is elbow deep. That's okay. I find, too, that things that, like, get stuck on this, so I just have to, like... That's what I'm saying. I think the thing is actually more work <laughs> than the fork. <laughs> yeah. Using a fork is a pain. The pastry. Oh, yeah, okay. because it Maybe because it has five, uh, six like tongs basically, and they're like really thin pieces of wire. It like makes it through it a little bit better. It helps break down those pieces of butter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but again, you can use your hand. You can use a fork. You can use whatever you have at your disposal. Weirdin's um, grandma used to slap her for using tools like that. So it's that she uses hands. Yeah. And I mean, that is the that is the OG and way. It's funny because like some people are always like, oh, like I remember Keshul, you'd asked whether you needed like a stand mixer. Stand mixers are actually not good for scones because um, it works it too much. And it's, uh, yeah, dangle hoppers, exactly. And it's actually um, is worse and gives you worse scones. You can use it in a food processor i've never actually done it but a lot of people do use it i just never have you do have to be careful though because if you overwork it it'll do the same thing yeah it'll it can just, still do the same thing so you yeah. want to be really careful you like want to pulse it almost <laughs> lecture so once you kind of have it broken down i just like go in and just like really mush it between my fingers uh, check jenny's crumbly picture okay right, we, yeah so we have a question here so from jenny i still Is, have like big old pieces here I that actually looks really good to me jenny it looks good. I would go through Jenny and just make sure, like, so for example, I don't know if I'm just gonna like sift this with my hand here. Like, I still have some big chunks of butter here. I don't know if you can see it on my hand. Yeah. So what I'm doing is going through to make sure that these don't exist anymore. Okay. Um, so you're just taking, you're mushing it together with flour. So you're kind of incorporating it 
um, so it doesn't get totally stuck to your hand, but it's 1000% gonna get stuck to your hand. And again, the smaller it is, the more butter there is kind of spread out throughout the scones and like the flakier and better they're gonna be. You don't wanna like mix it for a hundred years, but you definitely wanna like make sure that they're like kind of flattened out, incorporated um, within your mixture. So I just go through when I find chunks, I just kind of like mush it together. <laughs> No worries, Castro. And honestly, the pastry blender is just to break them down into smaller pieces. And then even with the pastry blender, I go in and do it more with hands. Yeah, that's the thing is every, everybody- I make can sure slow you, down. Make sure no you worries. take your time. Like that, that's why I'm like- This is honestly, like this butter part is like the most important part of the scone making. It's like, it sounds really stupid, but when you're making it, you want to make sure that that butter is incorporated super, super well. If it's not, you're going to have some parts that are like just dry ass flour. And that nobody wants that. Okay. <laughs> Truly is the mod. Um, I'm gonna zoom in on sure. your bowl. Sure. So it's a little bit more to the left, maybe. Um, just to show you, is like so you can actually kind of still see chunks of butter. Yeah. So you can see like how sometimes when I come up, I still have these like, and they're visible chunks. Like that's not flour. That's butter kind of surrounded in flour. Um, so I'm just going through. I'm. They're usually at the bottom. Bringing them up. Squishing them between my fingers. So that was a big chunk of butter. I just squished All right, we got another uh, this is a really nice one. You got some twin, good pictures. Twin. Oh, I got small looking good yeah, Twin has a really nice one looking very good Look at that everybody's getting it um, And again so if you're chunks. If it's really warm in your house and you think you're done. Yeah, just... especially if you don't have air conditioning, like I said, and you have like a warmer environment, I would definitely suggest if you're feeling your butter is like getting melty, like where it's like no longer still cold cubes, just put it in the pop in the fridge for a few minutes and it'll just harden those back up and then you can keep working on it. You just want the butter to stay as cold as possible. And it's, it's cold. <laughs> And you don't have to do it as long as she's doing it. Um, she's just doing. I'm it just doing it slowly. So she's I'm just taking doing it to stall <laughs> a little bit. Oh, I moved the bowl. Sorry. Pop back into the fridge now. Ooh, a chilled bowl. Oh, you could. I think the only thing with a chilled bowl would, would be you'd have to put a chilled bowl and a non-chilled bowl because then you put the flour in the non-chilled bowl, then you take the chilled bowl out of the fridge to put the butter. But, it's you know. it's it's honestly like. So long as it's not just like mush or melted, you're you're fine. I know, they're looking so good, I'm excited. Have you guys ever used kinetic sand? Like, you know the sand that like, <laughs> well. Like, <laughs> that's the comparison. Well, that's well, basically what it is. It's it's like flour, but like it's really soft and buttery. Like it's not, it's not coarse like flour sometimes can be. Um, it's so if you've ever used kinetic sand, that's kind of the texture where like you could take it and make like a form in your hand, but then also just crumble it apart. It's literally buttered flour. Yeah, but you know, comparisons, if you've, if you've played with it. Sometimes you go to a store and they have it and I mean pre-COVID, you know, but you just like go and play with it. Is that okay, says Kestrel? Oh, picture. Uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, let me try to bring it over to you. Yeah, it's looking good. Just make sure that there's no like giant chunks yeah, and you'll be fine. Maybe work a little, a little bit more. There's a couple pieces that look a little bit yeah. big, but that's still okay. It's still not that bad. <laughs> Kinetic stand. That's funny. Um, so I'm going to wash my hands because uh, obviously they're very, very dirty. You've eaten oh, kinetic sand. I probably God, wouldn't suggest doc, eating kinetic sand. That explains um, a lot, Dr. Stein. Man, these all look so good. Okay, so next thing you need is your sugar. So wash your hands. Sugar. Get your sugar. Clean up your station if you made a mess like I did. Sugar. I make messes. So we have our mixture, which is uh, flour, baking powder, salt, and butter. We are going to add our sugar, which is one third of a cup of uh, sugar. Um, so again, if you're using an actual measuring cup, um, usually sugar you don't have to pound because it like just sinks into little spaces. There's no um, air. Um, but again, I'm using a, a spoon. Um, yes, yeah, so you need a third of a cup of sugar. And just make sure, again, it's not rounded, so you just kind of shake it down. If you want, again, you can use a knife to flatten it, but just shake it. Sugar is actually super lenient and works really well to shaking. Um, 
it likes to it likes to shake. So take your sugar, pour it in. It looks wonderful. Okay. Um, and the next thing you need is you uh, make sure you take your sugar, put it away so you know you've put it in, right? Every time we use something, put it to the side or put it um, in the cupboard or put it somewhere so that you know you've used it so you don't forget uh, if there's something that you haven't used. So the next thing we need is we need our, su our, our sugar, our milk. So um, I've left mine in the fridge because I didn't want it to, you know, be milk, but I have a special treat for you while you're trying to um, do your sugar. We have had so many discussions about Doing. Canadian milk. Is this is this a front cam or a top cam kind of situation? Uh, we'll do we'll do top. <laughs> so we had it. We we are like we have to do this. So for Weirdin and anybody else, I'm coming. I'm coming. We into have. This one. We have Canadian, or Ontarian, I guess, milk in a bag. Can, can, we have Canadian milk. <laughs> you love to bake. Yes, Daniel. Um, so this is milk in a bag. It has three individual bags. Very, you know, like you just like slap it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's Sunday when. And it uh, just has a little bread clip on it to keep it closed. It is lactose free, because otherwise, uh, bad things, you know? So within this bag. So we have uh, this bag of milk, which actually has three bags of milk in it. And obviously you're not going to use, use this and pour that. So you need some time or some ways to figure it out. Uh, you, so you can use any kind of milk you want. If, if you use like a creamier milk, um, it might make it a bit creamier, but I've just always used like 1%. You can use whatever you it's got, really. Like when we eat cereal <laughs> and things like that, we, we always use 1% for everything. So it's like, we're not gonna buy milk like we're not gonna buy yeah. like two or three percent milk. I mean, just sometimes for a I will for certain recipes, like panna cotta. Don't use this. Um, well, it's if you need but, cream. Yeah, use if it specifies cream. cream, use cream. If it says milk, use whatever you have. Um, so we need a little vessel to put our milk in to make sure that you can actually pour it. Um, you, we can get cartons or jugs, um, but this is this oh, is wait, our oh, wait, way. Do, and it's do more we fun. Have we some? actually do it's the very back though. If you want to grab it. Yeah, yeah. Let's. Let's show off the wonderful land of Canada. So, put in the jug. Hey, oh man, this is... And uh, I usually like, again, this is from like my childhood. You like tap the shit out of it so that it actually goes in the bottom of the of the. Yes, this is last. See, it's like it's the same company, the same thing. Oh, that's gonna be so loud. Yeah, nobody oh, does that. That is weird. It's not. It, it makes that's... it so it like settles into the, like so it like doesn't fall out. You know. It's a colorful I think. We got this here in Brazil, but it's only one bag. Oh, interesting. Oh. And then we so it's we not just only Canada. Cut the tip off. So we're not weird. You want to make sure your hole's not too large, though, because like, see, I just again because I honestly, as a child, no, I would does. sometimes like just put it in and then like spill milk everywhere. I learned from my own self that I need to. You smack do that it. anyways. So rude. She does that anyways. This is not. And then you just cut the little corner off. Don't put it in your flour. Obviously. And like then this? you throw that in the garbage. You're on garbage duty. And then you put these back in the fridge. And that's your bag of milk. <laughs> wow. Wow, apparently you're the chef, so slapping the bag into the cup is also the way I do it. Perfect. <laughs> but yeah, no, it, it's funny because a lot of people, like, when they don't know or when they hear about bag milk for the first time, they think you pour the bag into this. Yeah, you don't. But, but no, 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 you just put the bag in it. Yep. And then, uh, so you need my, two thirds my, of a cup of milk. Where's my so, cooking So, uh, twin, for your measurements, you want to like do what you did for the sugar, but double. You know, like ten, uh, ten tablespoons and two teaspoons is what you're looking for. Well, you need, you need two thirds of a cup. Okay, well that's. Bag milk would be better for individuals since maybe they keep longer yeah. if they stay in individual bags. Um, yes, but once you open them, they're not like, you know. Um, you should have aprons. Yeah. I would love an apron eventually. Yeah. Yeah, apron is is on the list of things to find. That's true. How you covered? How you not covered in flour? Um, that it actually, you know, why you're not covered in flour is because of the container. Yeah. It's like if you're using just like this container, it makes it so easy to not get flour everywhere. That's like the big trick. 
Okay. <laughs> and then once it's in here, you're not getting it everywhere. Glass measuring cup, perfect twin. That works perfect. Um, so yeah, put your milk in, and then what it, what you do is you take your fork, and you're just mixing with a fork until um, it becomes what it, we call kind of straggly. Um, so you're incorporating the milk and all your dry ingredients uh, until it becomes some sort of dough-like consistency. Uh, you don't need the pastry butter, you're good. We just needed it for the butter. So what you're saying is you can put your You can use a away. spoon. Um, sometimes wooden spoons work really well. <laughs> Twin. <laughs> oh well. We are what we it is what it is, you know? And it's going to look super dry. Okay, and dry is where it's at. I'm just gonna put this milk away. Nora Croc also has a container and still gets flour everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I mean this is probably pretty. I, I try to keep it clean because, like. Flour gets everywhere, though. Yeah. Flour, I sometimes get it all over myself. Yeah. Like, especially when I'm, like, mixing and I'm just like, whoosh, and I, like, eat it. It's fine. Um, it's not even a bad thing to have flour everywhere because until it's cooked, <laughs> you're fine. So, once you kind of get to a point where, like, there's no visible liquid left, you can definitely just get right in there, use your elbow grease. Um, do it by hand. So I'm at the point where like it's sticking to the fork. There's no liquid left in the bottom, right? So I, mine's just basically kind of moist, uh, wet, dry ingredients. You know, flour is the glitter of cooking. Yes, yes, it is. Or in my case, sometimes salt. Sometimes salt goes everywhere. <laughs> um, so yeah, once you're at this point, you're just trying to basically uh, combine all the ingredients together into a dough like substance. Like I said, it's going to be dry and you're going to be like, why is it not incorporating? Um, but it will. <gasps> meeple. Oh, <Whoa>, meeple. <laughs> well, meeple's <laughs> not getting a scone. <laughs> no scones for meeple. How are you doing, meeple? Hopefully you're, yeah. you're here to bake along. Make, make your own scones. So if you were to pick it up and it just like falls apart, that's okay. Okay, we're gonna work it. You don't wanna work it too much because again, that's where kind of that building too much gluten comes in from that flour. You wanna work it just enough that it comes together, okay? Do and if you're using your hands, you're gonna have to wash them again in a little bit, but that's okay, you know? Uh, Kestrel. What? You didn't even buy scones? <laughs> wow. Um, I was gonna say, do you wanna explain gluten? <laughs> um. So no, no, okay, no, not the scientific thing, but it's overworking the flour. But it's not even overworking because well, you, when you're ba when you're baking bread, you want to work it enough that if you stretch the dough, it like stretches as opposed to like rips in half. So for example, if you're making pizza dough or bread, you want it to be stretchy. Whereas this, we want it to kind of like break apart. Okay, um, so you don't you want to like squish it together into a ball but you don't want to like make it squishy and like pliable. You and don't want it to be like Play-Doh. And, and that's what the gluten is. If, you, if yeah. you're like, if you're over, if you're working, so if you're kneading the dough, it creates that el elasticity. Yeah, yeah, elasticity is a good word for it. Yeah. And if you, I don't know if you can oh, see. Okay, wait, we're just dropping some, some points. <sighs> and we gotta hydrate. Hydrate? I, I okay, will well, hydrate. I can't, you can do it for me. Um, <laughs> she um, is, so if you look, I have dough. this like kind of um, incorporated straggly. And by straggly, I don't know if you want to zoom in a little bit. Yeah. Straggly is like, there's kind of like pieces hanging off. It okay. looks flaky. Um, yeah, it's, it's it, even when you turn it over to like the nice side, it's still kind of like chunky and, and not nice. It's not bread, you know? Um, and I have, as you can tell, probably tell a bunch of stuff left in the bowl. Um, I'm just going to grab that, put it in the center because I don't want to leave any of that behind. We need that, that material or those ingredients to be part of the scones. Cause that's food. Yeah, it's food. You don't want to waste <laughs> it. Um, it'll mess up your, your kind of ratio of things too. Um, so putting those kind of straggly bits in the middle. And then I really just try and like, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, just like 
fold it together, <laughs> okay? Just trying to incorporate that kind of dry area into perhaps where there's a little bit more wetness in the middle. And that was my elbow cracking. I don't know if anybody heard that. That was your that. elbow? <laughs> yeah. I heard that. That was so gross. <laughs> and as it falls off, just push it back in, work it together. And you might, as you're working, see like little flecks of, of butter, which is again where we're going to end up finding those holes, right? That was just a fleck of butter I picked off. So as that melts in the oven, that's where we get those lovely flaky like air holes in your scones. So work it together until it's kind of a ball-like substance. Um, if you're all done, then put it in the fridge for a little bit. Okay, make sure that butter doesn't get warm. Oh, if you haven't turned your oven on, yes, please turn it on. <laughs> yeah, you can do that. Unless you have like a two-minute oven. I'm, I'm going to wait a little bit for mine, but if yours takes a while, now is a good time. Yeah, if you our, haven't already. That's like the one nice part about that oven. So our oven is like a... I'm going to let it sit a minute. I'm going to wash my hands, and then we're going to wait to make sure everyone's at this point, and then I will uh, do the next step. Okay? So, so if you're here, wash your hands, put it in the fridge for a little bit, and we'll hang out and wait. For everyone else to be ready. Okay, keep hanging out for a little bit. I moved the milk and now there's like a disaster happening in the fridge. <laughs> it's okay. I'll work it out. It's fine. Um. Perfect. Now we wait. Make sure everyone's there. Do you want to go back to my face for yeah. a minute? While I wait and hang out? Yeah, it just, so if you over need, what it's actually going to do is it's going to make it pretty tough because that gluten, it like has had too much, um, chance to form. So you actually want, because you want scones to actually be like on the drier, flakier side. Um, if they're too tough, once you've cooked them, then the thing that you know you've done is overworked the dough. That's it. Added a glob of vanilla bean paste. Sure. Ooh. That's awesome. So if you are oven to what temperature? Uh, 425 Fahrenheit. If you um, are not going to make cinnamon sugar scones, so if you just want plain scones, um, adding vanilla is a really nice flavor. I actually took out the vanilla to show you. Um, so if you wanted to add some vanilla in your dough, you could. Uh, and then I forgot because I put it away. Largest bottle of vanilla of all time. Well, it's, it's important, you know? Um, when it says form a dough, I was like, oh, I know how to do that. Yeah, exactly. So that, that's one of the things is like you don't want to overwork scones because you actually want them to be like dry AF, you know? That's going to be like pastries. Yeah. Pastries, are pastries you want them to be really, really... Um, flaky. That's the thing. You want yeah. flakiness. But some pastry, if you're doing like a shoe or something, then you want them... You're like, you're, you're layering with butter, so it's like a little bit different, but... Oh, and I think that's um, why it'll be super interesting at one point if you make like croissant. Yeah, you could add it with the milk... Um, generally, yes. Then you're working it in. I'm, be I, I, you don't, you don't need to, um, but you can add it. You can even do a little bit now if you want. But I think adding it to the um, milk would be good because you can mix it in yeah. with the milk so yeah. it gets spread more. And then I forgot because I didn't have it out, you know. <laughs> oh, there's another picture. Um, but yeah, so if you want to make just plain scones, but add a little bit of hint of vanilla, um, I use artificial oh. vanilla because I had like a really bad experience. Ooh. Ooh, that looks great. Kestrels, yours looks Kestrels, really that was awesome. good. Um, I had a bad experience with um, um, uh, like real vanilla. So like not vanilla pod, but like the not artificial, like the, I can't even think of what it's the, called right the, now. It, yeah, not artificial um, liquid vanilla. And uh, when you let it sit, it's actually um, like tapered with alcohol. And so it like expired and only left alcohol behind it was awful so anyway i just tend to stay away from it if you want if you're used to using it you can use that i just use art artificial because like it's a little bit more stable and i can just leave this in the cupboard and it works totally fine um and you don't get drunk sniffing it oh man it was like super alcohol by the end it anyway, was awful um so if you're making cinnamon sugar scones okay here is where um you need to make that topping if you bought the topping good on you um, if you have not built the topping you need to make it, this is where we're going to take a minute to do that, okay? Uh, I don't let it sit. 
or you shouldn't let it sit. I don't know which. <laughs> well, you don't let it sit. Like the artificial? No, the real one. Yeah. You're not I, supposed to, yeah, you're supposed to use it. <laughs> to be fair, I don't know how old it was, you know? It was in my cupboard. Anyway, I experimented, it was bad. I, re, I remade things, it's fine. Um, I find artificial work great, so that's my story. Do you want to? Uh, I'm gonna do it after, actually. So, you shouldn't, yes, I understand. Um, so I have a little bowl. Oh, do you wanna go back to the top? Yes, ma'am. Cool. So we are going to make our cinnamon sugar um, topping. And uh, super simple, and you can use this like like I said, you're gonna have some extra left over, which is amazing. You can just put it on toast or like throw it at people for fun. Don't throw it at people, but you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Don't throw it at people. So you're going to use um, a half cup of sugar, which uh, technically this is, uh, I've already used this for flour. So I don't want flour in my sugar. I'm going to just rinse this uh, and dry it because otherwise your sugar will be ruined. Um, so just wash your half cup. So you can use it for sugar. Fatty, welcome home for cinnamon sugar. <laughs> Honestly, would he be angry? I don't even know. Uh, I mean, he would taste delicious. I would be angry because I'm going to have to clean it up off the floor. Eh, that's fine. You're doing half with cinnamon sugar and half plain. That's a good yeah, idea. Yeah, that's perfect because then you can have a little, uh, little taste test of both, you know? Yeah. And I actually love putting like butter, jam, anything on the cinnamon sugar ones. Um, but if you're not sure, do half and half. It's all good. You can always make more, you know, later this week. Um, so make sure you dry your, your measuring cup because otherwise, again, sugar, moisture, bad. Um, so we need half a cup of sugar. And yes, I put the sugar away. But, you know, strawberry preserves. Yes, amazing. I previously made cinnamon sugar because toast. Yeah, exactly. And and Defub use, uses the extra on toast all the time. Um. So take your half cup. Again, give it a little shake. It likes to be shook down into place. Um, put it into a separate bowl. Okay, you want just a, it can just be a small bowl. Um, this is actually quite large for what I need, but it works really well. So half a cup of sugar in that cup. You know not you no longer need this. You can actually toss it in the sink. Okay. Uh, the last thing we are doing that we need ingredient wise is your cinnamon. My cinnamon, it has like a zipper on it, but like, let's be honest, it never works and just explodes everywhere, so it's in a bag. You bought fancy strawberry jam? Yes! Oh, that's okay, Kestrel. Maybe it'll come in a couple days. Part of a deck builder where you add new cards? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> um, so we're looking for one teaspoon of cinnamon. Um, you can have, yes, no name is the best. You know, it doesn't change the flavor and it's cheaper. You know, you don't need to be expensive and get fancy cinnamon. You just need cinnamon. Is this a deck builder where you add new cards <laughs> to the deck? I love it. <laughs> um, I would say go with a teaspoon. Um, if you're perhaps a little bit hesitant to have too much cinnamon, err on the side of caution. Put a little bit less. You can always add more, right? Um, but put it in, mix it up, and then see if, if you like going by color and flavor like the food. Um, I like it tasting the same all the time. Make sure it's flattened, right? I just used the, the bag, like I literally just took the bag and ground it against it, um, made sure it was flat, pour it in. Cinnamon likes to go poof, um, so it can become a smidge of a mess at times. And again, this bag, it's not, it's not good. Usually cinnamon is what I get. Actually, when I went to go take the picture, uh, it is uh, one teaspoon, not half. So do two halves. Um, when I went to go take the picture to like for the promo, then no, it's all good. Um, I accidentally the bag was closed, okay, and I accidentally like kicked, like not kicked it, but like punched it, and I had cinnamon all over the kitchen, and I didn't tell anybody. I just cleaned it up. It was bad. Uh, this is the first I've heard of this. Um... It was bad. <laughs> it was everywhere. <laughs> Thanks I had to clean the... it to take the picture. <laughs> wow. And um, make sure you ask questions. Definitely definitely ask questions. If you're unsure of something, <laughs> ask questions. Um, so yeah, so you're just gonna mix it. Um, if if you have if you want to just use the spoon you just had or a new spoon, I'm just gonna grab a different one because that has flour on it. 
And if you're planning on using this for anything other than the scones in the future, you don't want flour, raw flour in your uh, bowl. So just make sure you use a clean spoon or the one you just used for the cinnamon. Um, just because, again, you don't want to be eating raw flour um, in other situations. Um, what? <laughs> I true. And it was just on the counter. Like, it was just back here, and it was just, like, kind of behind the, the stuff. I just, it was fine. I've made worse messes, honestly. Um, so you're just going to take this, and you can just honestly shake it if you really want. Mix it with a spoon. And you're just trying to make it so that when you move the sugar, there isn't like a huge streak of just cinnamon, okay? Um, you wanna make sure that, so when I move this, that I'm seeing kind of a mix. Um, I can see that this is quite pale here compared to here. So I'm just trying to mix it around a little bit so it's pretty even. And when I do that, I can see that there's like a streak of cinnamon, right? I'm trying to make it so I don't have that. Mix a little bit more. It's a little bit better um, incorporated now. I still have some at the bottom, and so I'm just working it. I would totally You put can it definitely in. put it in a container and shake it, actually. That's probably super simple and a lot better than what I'm doing. That's what I do. And, um, then, and then you taste there. it to see if it's cinnamony enough. And then you it is cinnamony more. enough. It's perfect. You eat it all the time. <laughs> Um, and I would save the spoon you're using, um, save it for now because you're going to need it for the cinnamon sugar. Everything else you can now get rid of and put in the sink. So I'm just going to take a second and clean up my station, put everything I don't need in the sink that I can wash after we're done. <laughs> clean as you go, they say. And I don't need any Who of this. Who they is, I don't know, but... Perfect. I need to shake for cinnamon sugar and you make funnel fries at the pizza place. Yeah, that makes sense because it's, uh, or you pre-mix it or just mix it in that and then just shake it a little bit on top. That works. Um, so things you should have kind of in your vicinity at this point, okay? Um, you need your baking sheet. Okay, and mine is not pretty, but baking sheet. Keep this mixture here. Um, if you don't want to use parchment paper, that's fine. Um, it might get a little bit messy on your sheet, <laughs> so be prepared to clean it, especially if you're doing cinnamon sugar. Um, the, the sugar might melt a little bit and make kind of a mess, um, but it should be fine. The other thing, too, is if you're not using parchment paper, it might... Um, cook a little bit different temp, a uh, little bit time. So just make sure you're watching it when it's cooking. Um, but you need your cookie sheet. If you're using it, you need your parchment paper. If you're not using it, again, that's fine too. I just prefer it. I find it makes cleanup a lot easier. And um, yeah, I just I just prefer using it. That's okay, twin. You don't need it. Um, like I said. The, there's a couple steps in that will be more important um, for you because you're not using parchment paper, just for cleanup wise, honestly, um, just because it can make it can make a mess. And I don't think it's gonna cook that much different. No, no, no. And again, every oven is different anyway, so you're just watching them like either way, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, if you're doing cinnamon sugar, I suggest having a little plate and I'll explain why. Um, you actually don't need to grease it because it has butter in it. Um, you can. It's up to you. You don't have to, though. If you, it'll be fine. If you grease it, though, it'll, it'll burn the butter. Um, not necessarily. Because it's high temp. I would just not grease it. I would just yeah. leave it as it is. Because it's so flaky and not wet, it's not going to yeah. stick. Throw it everywhere. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm going to put my parchment paper out because I'm using it because um, I find it easier to not make a mess. Shoot. You should do half and half. <laughs> half parchment, I took half the bigger not. one and like... No, that's what it is. 
like Oprah. Cinnamon for everyone. Oh, yeah. Okay. So you need your dough, so if it's in the fridge, make sure you get it out. It's going to be a Miss, lovely dough. Miss Rip parchment paper, moose to mini, mini painting desk. <laughs> <laughs> um, so with your dough, okay, I'm gonna move this just a sec so you can see. Um, it's probably pretty cold if you put it in the fridge. Make sure it's just kind of incorporated. Here's where your oven should be on by now. Actually, yeah, I need to preheat the oven. <laughs> this is my preheating time. Make sure everybody has ovens on because it's going in soon. Okay. Um, so this, you're going to take this and you're basically trying to make like a flat disc, like a, like a Frisbee, sort of, eh, you know. Yeah, like a thick frisbee. So I'm just making sure that there's no like major cracks because they'll just it'll just break apart. Anywhere there's a giant crack, um, it it it'll be fine. It'll cook fine. It just won't look as pretty. Um, <laughs> and like it's all about looks, you know. <laughs> so I uh, see. I just made a giant hole um, by squishing it. So again, squishing there, working it together. Not like kneading it. So not like using the heel of your hand and really giving her. Um, cause again, we don't want that gluten just kind of pushing the ingredients together. Like you're forcing it to love each other. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. Uh, your oven can take up to 20 minutes. Our That's old the, oven did too. Our, this one's super oh, fast, which is why I just did ours here. Our old one literally but, like 20 minutes was a good day. Yeah. It was so 20 bad. minutes in the middle of summer was a great day. Okay. Come on, scones. Be nice to me here. Okay, so you're gonna plop it on your baking sheet. Um, you don't need this bowl, you can get rid of it. Done. Bye. You're dying, why are you dying? In the good way or in the bad way? Because if it's in the bad way, should we, should we call someone? So if you look at my picture from yesterday, as I was doing it quickly, one of the things that I didn't do great was I left it as kind of a dome shape. Okay, and it'll be kind of hard to see in this angle, um, <laughs> um, so you don't want it to be a dome. Okay. You do want it to be as flat as possible. It'll help it to cook more evenly. Um, once you kind of divide it into the pieces. Okay. So make like a round mound ball thing, uh, and then kind of squish it down while trying to maintain that you don't have these giant cracks. This is kind of the tricky part. Okay. And I just kind of like use my thumb and like push it together. It'll be fine. But the flatter and more kind of even the whole top is, the better it will cook. It'll still cook in the end. Who really cares? But again, it'll just cook a little bit more evenly. If you saw my picture, um, because the top was raised a little bit, the tip got a little burned. Um, so in this case, we're trying to keep it as even as possible. While still making it look pretty, you know. How, how thick do you do you have yours? Um, like an inch. Inchish. Yeah. So you don't want it. You're making either six or eight scones, depending on how many you feel like making and how much math you want to do. And it's you don't want it like flat like a cookie. No, like I have it, you know, about this. I don't know if you can tilt. I it. can probably like. As it. Yeah, okay, you know, so about bit, that yeah, thick. maybe like an inch and a half. Um, and I'm trying to make sure that there's like no like really thin bits on the end. So just kind of pushing them in. Again, making it kind of like a small Frisbee, you know, round, uh, flat. <laughs> I don't have another analogy. <laughs> like but, a cake. Um, yeah, like, but cakes, once they're cooked, are, are rounded on top, unless you cut it, you know? Two oh, fingers thick? True. Yeah, that works. You can make it a little bit thinner if you want them to be a little bit, um, like, wider scones. But again, honestly... It's preference at this point. Yeah. So long as it's not, like, four inches thick and, like, a ball form, it'll cook fine. Weirdin has a fantastic-looking 
like in picture. Ooh, we didn't know it's great. That's a nice looking, a nice looking dough. Okay. So at this point. <laughs> That's a big spoon. I love that they're using a spoon as the thing, but it's a big spoon. <laughs> um, so at this point, if you have your, your mound kind of formed, um, you want a knife to cut them into pieces. Okay, you can technically use like unflavored floss. Don't use mint, because that'll be like hella nasty. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> it will. Like That's you don't so want gross. mint in there, okay? <laughs> um, I just honestly, I just take a knife. Okay, you can use a butter knife if you want. Um, any sort of knife that's going to cut through, it works perfectly. They are, Steph, they are. And I mean, actually, that's not even true. Uh, scones can be... I mean, they can be any shape They you can want, be like, yeah, they, they almost... You can circular usually, ones are more biscuit-like. Yeah, that's the thing. You get more like a biscuit, biscuit shape. Stabby, stabby. Okay, so... Uh, we have another picture first. Do we? Oh, that's we our own We have a wonderful picture from <laughs> Kestrel. Very nice, Kestrel. That looks awesome. Yeah. That actually does look So really you're going to take your knife... Um, you are now going to decide if you want it in six or eight. I like eight because math is easier. Okay. Um, so you're going to take it, cut it in half. Um, if you have parchment paper, don't like use a serrated knife and like cut it because you're going to cut your parchment paper and then have to redo it. And that's too much work. Um, so use a butter knife or a non serrated knife works really well. Cut it in half. Okay, um, tuck in the little end. You don't want little little ones. We have another picture coming in from Twin. Yeah, Kesha, that works perfect. Hey, very nice Twin, looks great. Love it. Yeah, and that's the thing is the, the thickness isn't super important. It'll just... You're just gonna have to watch them. Yeah. Um, it, but Kesha about pinky and ring finger is perfect. Yeah, it, that's the thing is the only difference is it'll change cooking temperature, but none of them will cook at the same. So it's... Nope. Um, so once you've cut it in half, um, you can, if you do six, cut each one into threes, right? Kind of like this. Yeah, Kesha, I love it. <laughs> we got the measurement. Um, I like eights just because one, they last longer, and two, uh, it's easier. <laughs> so cut it in half again. <laughs> your fingers, your fingers. And especially are if you're doing some plain and some uh, cinnamon, cinnamon sugar. Then you can have like, you know, if you want to share with somebody, you can have two of each. Um, but it's up to you. You you decide, you know. Um, and now for eight, I just cut it each one and a half again. Um, I don't go straight across because it messes up the little tips in the middle. And again, I like them to look pretty. So I just go around, <laughs> eyeball it. Cut each one in half. Oops, my hands are buttery. Don't cut your finger off. Okay. Please, please no cutting of fingers. If you're using a sharp knife, please uh, be careful. But the thing, Again, you, can, you can use a butter knife for this. Like it's yeah, it's, you can use anything. I just, just find um, this knife not be, with it not being serrated and not being a butter uh, not being um, too sharp works really well. Yeah, they're not um, sharp. <laughs> they're not really sharp. <laughs> they used to be. They're not anymore. Um, so again, I'm just cutting into eight because I prefer uh, for us to have eight. You can make six if you like. Uh, and if they're not all equal, who cares? You know, it's handmade. <laughs> it's artisan. It's artisan. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Put your knife somewhere safe. Out of the way. Don't cut yourself. Um, and I'm going to wait a minute just to make sure you guys have had a chance to cut up your, your pieces, okay? Okay, relax. Stupid oven. Having a panic attack. <laughs> um, your hands are going to be very buttery. That's okay, you know. Um, so a couple things. When obviously they're cut, they're still in a circle. We are going to separate them. Okay, so you want them to be well cut, kind of between um, between each other. If not, just like rip it and poke it with your finger. It's fine. You can't mess it up. Honestly, it's super easy. <laughs> Um, cut into six because then you have six days, eight seems like too long. That's, that works perfect. So if you're just eating them yourself and you can have like one every day, that's perfect because I'm sharing them and I want the most amount possible, I'm making eight. Because <laughs> somebody likes to eat all my scones. Whoa. <laughs> I'm feeling targeted here. Uh, 
Um, so if you want um, the sides to be like kind of softer, then, <laughs> then you can keep your pieces closer together within the circle because they won't get like the most amount of heat. I like them to be a little bit crispier and cook a little bit. So I tend to have them like basically as far away as possible still within the circle because it looks nice. Um, so just take your pieces, start separating them away from each other. <laughs> right, so I cut them. This is not like super cut, so I'm just oh. moving them away. Oh, we have a nice little picture coming in. You have in a picture? A weirdin'. Yeah, those look great, weirdin'. I love it. So when you're doing your cinnamon sugar, because I think people might be at that point at the moment, um, you can sprinkle it on right on here. Um, but one of the things you might have is that if you have a lot of sugar that remains kind of around, it tends to like turn into like burnt sugar and stick to them. So one of the things you can do, and I have this plate for, because I'm trying to be clean and organized, um, is to put some of the cinnamon sugar on here. Okay, there's like pour a bunch. I'm not using this bowl. Don't worry about it. I'm not using. Um, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> I'm not using this bowl because I do want to use this at some point in the future, um, and I don't want uh, the flour to be in here. Okay, I want to be able to use this. Raw flour is gross, guys. Don't eat raw flour. Um, so. Put it on a plate, okay? And what I do is take the sides, because I want it to be all over. I love cinnamon sugar. I'm gonna put as much as I can. Don't put it on the bottom, because once you put that on the sheet, it's just going to burn, okay? Um, little pieces here and there, but don't like coat it. So coat each side, like the two sides. And it's gonna be hard to tell that it's on there. Just layer it, okay? Both sides. And you can then put it on the top. Some lovely little top sugar here. And put it down. Um, what I usually do after is sprinkle just a little bit more on top because I love cinnamon sugar and I want there to be the most amount possible. Um, There's a picture from Twin. Ooh, yes, Twin, those look amazing. So again. And everybody's scones actually look really, really good. Because cool. I'm doing all of them cinnamon sugar, um, you might already be done. <laughs> if your oven is preheated, your scones are nicely separated on your baking sheet and not a, like a disaster like mine right now, um, and your oven is preheated, I don't know if I said that already, you can put your scones in. The love meeples, we, okay. we are making, are you making them all? Cinnamon? I'm making them all cinnamon sugar because so that's the ones I like. Cinnamon sugar deliciousness. It's funny because like cinnamon sugar, I think, is a good fl a good scone flavor, especially when we're making them, because it doesn't like you can put things with them. You can put strawberry yeah. jam; it still tastes delicious. Yeah. Um, but a nice plain scone is also really really nice if you want to just eat it with butter and not have that cinnamon on top. Who doesn't want cinnamon? You know, cinnamon's great. I mean, sometimes you don't. You know, sometimes <laughs> you really want to eat it with something else. They all look so good. Oh my goodness, you guys are doing a great job. So I'm just coating all of mine. And yes, Julie is our like hype person today. She's awesome. We love Julie. And if you run out of cinnamon sugar, just put more from the bowl, okay? Making sure all of it, not the bottom, but all the sides and top are covered. Cause I like cinnamon sugar. Neurocroc, I am with you. Blueberry scones are blueberry scones are super good, best. but again, because the moisture in blueberries, honestly, blueberries and raspberries are the, like the hardest things to cook with, because the amount of moisture in them once they're cooked sucks, just sucks. Um, so the very very first time I made scones, I was like, scones are gonna be so easy. I made blueberry scones, and they basically turned to a puddle. I'm not even kidding. They were just literally a puddle on the on the pan, and I was like, but now what do I do? And I didn't understand. And uh, they're a lot more hard, like a lot more difficult to deal with because, oh damn, I put it on the bottom. It's fine. 
Um, cinnamon, sugar, solid churros. Exactly. That's yes. what we were saying. It's, it's, it's pretty similar. If you flavor. know churros, you know what's up. So as you can tell, I don't know if you can see, I have like some flour dough pieces in, uh, in the cinnamon sugar. So that's why I didn't want to use the bowl, right? I don't want that raw dough ending up in this lovely uh, cinnamon sugar mixture that I have um, that I could then use for other things. Reading's never had a mush problem with blueberries. Well, you're really lucky. I've used frozen and I've used fresh. Frozen obviously have more moisture in them. Or I guess not obviously, but frozen have more moisture in them. Um, but I just like have really rough time. I've made blueberry muffins and they work better. Um, but scones, I just haven't had a lot of good things happen with we them. We have a picture from Kestrel. Yes, Kestrel, they look amazing. I like how they look like mini pizza slices. Yeah, I love them. So for me, I'm going to put just a little bit more um, cinnamon sugar on top. Again, just because, like, who doesn't need a little more cinnamon sugar, you know? A little bit more. Just to add a little bit of flavor on top. I like to be, have a little bit crunch there. With that sugar you don't have to totally up to you and like i said uh if you are ready you can pop them in the oven they take between 12 and 20 minutes so depending on your oven oh no what do you mean no oh, no i said blueberry muffins that had to had mold on top oh no julie yeah that's one of the things blueberry muffins are hard to tell for some of that i'm gonna wash my hands um in this sink that has a ton of stuff in it now if you are ready and your hands are clean and whatever, you can start putting them in the oven. Like I said, between um, 12 and 20 minutes, depending on your oven and things like that. What you're looking for is that the scones on top are becoming a little bit brown, okay? And that's where having the um, uh, a little bit flatter on top can be helpful because you don't want that tip to be burnt and the, the inside to be raw. Um, even if they are, honestly, you can put them in the microwave. But, you know, when you go to heat them up, but it is what it is. Um, if you find that the middle part, like the tip part, is a little bit higher than the rest, you can literally just take your finger, and I just wash my hands, but take your finger and, like, push it down because it is going to grow a lot with that baking powder. So you can just, like, push them down a little bit. Make sure it doesn't get too burned. Kind of like how these are down further. Just pushing down a little bit. You don't have to, but you can. Um, and then we're going to pop them in the oven. And that's it. Then we just wait for them to cook, basically. Uh, my oven's preheated. Don't burn yourself in the oven. I've done that before. And put it in. So now is where it's going to start being different for people. But what's the yeah. general rule? What's like the minimum you think? Um, minimum 12 minutes. It's, it's definitely not going to be less than 12 minutes. Um, unless you have like, I don't know, a super one. Um, I'd say definitely not more than 20 minutes, no matter what oven you have. Just because after that, you're probably getting to the point where they're going to be overcooked. Um, and kind of like too dry. So set a timer for probably 10 minutes. Yeah. So one of the things, if you're using cinnamon sugar, especially if you just did plain scones, um, then you won't really have this problem. Uh, let me just, I'm going to set a timer for myself too. Do, 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 do. So are we talking bread brown or more of a lighter golden brown? Um, usually a lighter golden brown. Yeah, you definitely don't want it browned like if you've ever seen a scone the top shouldn't be brown it should just be like yeah like you're not gonna have like the dark dark brown um but like a, a medium golden brown i'd say not even like a little bit darker than light but just kind of a little bit darker you know um so if you put cinnamon sugar on your scones when you go to take them off the rack uh, where's your picture from yesterday? It should be in Discord, on Discord. Uh, I missed something. What? My picture from yesterday. Oh, do you want to just show one? Oh, I could just show one. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I don't want to go try to I'm find a good that baker, picture. Guys. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. 
And actually, these are a pretty, pretty good example because these are a little bit over. Yeah, so here's what I did. Because my tips were a little bit too high because I had that rounded mound uh, shape as opposed to flat disc, um, these were a bit too done. So a little bit lighter than what I have here um, on these lovely... He, he left. He went to go take the dog out and didn't zoom in. What good is he, you know? <laughs> um... And as you can see, they like grow and kind of like sometimes shift. So if there's like, um, like a crack in the dough somewhere, it'll just kind of like start to lean, which is fine. Who cares? Um, but yeah, a little bit lighter than what I have here is probably ideal. Okay. These were in for me 16 minutes yesterday or 15, 50 or something. Um, but again, it'll depend on your oven. Um, so if you have the cinnamon sugar, when you take them off your cooling, off your uh, cookie sheet, uh, they're going to make a mess, okay? Because you still have cinnamon sugar kind of on them and around them. My suggestion is to put um, under your cooling rack either another baking sheet or um, a towel even. I usually put parchment paper under it just for easy cleanup because I don't want to have um, sugar literally everywhere in the kitchen. Um, what? Oh, he took the dog out. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get set up to take them out because they'll be out in 10, 15 minutes, give or take some time. Um, and I want to make sure that I'm ready for that. So a couple things I'm going to do because normally I would just take them out of the oven and put them right on top on, on the, the cooktop. Um, I'm obviously not going to do that because I want to be able to show you. So I'm going to put out some, some trivets, some heat things so that I don't put it directly on the surface. And uh, I'm going to lay out to get right my cooling rack ready to be able to take them out. Why is this room not called the food? Your feelings? No, not your feelings. Because this isn't a defoob stream. This is a colorful um, stream. So I have these trivets that I'm going to put here um, just to be able to take the heat from that uh, that baking sheet when it comes out. Uh, from what I'm seeing, this dough is similar to Southern Buttermilk Biscuit. Oh, interesting. You know what? Honestly, the the differences between a biscuit and scone, there's a, there's a lot of similarities. Like, they're probably very similar. Um, some differences are shape, a little bit of... I don't know if there's... I think you use, well, you use buttermilk instead of uh, milk. So they are slightly uh, more creamy, I guess. Um, but color the, food. Color food. But and, it's the same uh, texture, I think. Like a, a, a biscuit is yeah, kind of like that crumbly. They're very flaky, crumbly. Yeah. Um, scones are, some, like I said, a little bit on the drier side of biscuits only because of that buttermilk difference, right? And biscuits aren't usually, yeah, they're usually more savory. So like cheddar, chives, things like that. Um, you can make scones that are savory. You can make ones that are, are similar to biscuits. So we have a um, picture from Jenny, ooh. and that is definitely a small baking sheet, but they look Hey, they, that beautiful. works perfect. That looks great. I actually look beautiful. I'm excited. Um, so yeah, I'm going to get my cooling rack ready. Um, and like I said, I just put parchment because of cleanup. I know that it becomes a mess. And I don't like messes. So. Yeah, I mean, you can use like foil or you can a use paper foil. Towel. Sorry, you can use foil. You can use a towel. You can use um, a, a baking sheet. Anything you have that you can just kind of like lift up and get rid of the sugar is what you're looking for. Yeah, or just clean it after. Uh, Southern buttermilk biscuits rise a lot and are fluffy, and you cut the butter in like pastry. Yeah, biscuits over here are sweet. Chocolate bourbon. Uh, our national treasure. Yeah, because bis oh. biscuits are also like... Uh... Very cool. I'm going to turn this because I hate when it rolls. It drives me bananas. So, we have that. I'm going to get my cooling rack. Out and ready. Oh, we didn't show off this cooling rack. Can you show off this cooling rack? I, I put the other parts away. No, why would you do that? It's the coolest <sighs> cooling rack ever. I don't, we found this like randomly and we're like, okay, this is an instant buy. Okay, there's three levels, but I'm just getting the second. Yeah, yeah. So they have these, these legs. Because the biggest thing is like, I have so many cooling racks and they take up so much freaking space. I have one that's like almost the size of this. It's so big. Um, and it just takes up a lot of space. So we found these and they have these little fold out legs and uh, you can stack them. It has three layers and... Uh, 
So you can it literally, really this well. tiny little square, have three layers yeah. tall. So it works really well, rack. especially if you're doing a layered cake. Um, it worked really well to put the two cakes and they just, you and put you one put, on. You put like nine cookies on each layer. Yeah, and then the bottom one you don't have to have standing up, you can just have laying down, and then they sit three on top. They're great, but I only need one for the scones because it only makes eight, so I don't need uh, as many as this. And Jenny, you love how tall it is. I love it. Um, did you did you go through the how to check to see if they're cooked? So you That's probably a good idea to do that first. You can, if you want, use a toothpick. Um, because they're a little bit thicker, it can sometimes be misleading, I'll say, as opposed to like a cake where you can take a toothpick, stick it in, um, and check the temperature. Um, you can definitely do that though. I would suggest doing it in, um, towards the base where it's kind of in the middle. Um, just because that's the part that tends to be a little bit undercooked if any part of it is undercooked. Um... So that's kind of what uh, what I would suggest. Or do you do the old sacrifice one? Oh, you could definitely sacrifice one. <laughs> if you cut it in half to make it like an extra pizza, you know, cut the pizza in half. You would have you to cut it in half like kind of this way um, to make sure that that center is cooked. No, if you, if you cut it top down, make like yeah, a, but then the, you could like hope to get like The problem pieces. is is that this part is the part that's not necess that it's oh, going to okay. be undercooked if it's going to be undercooked. Yeah, because it might be hard to tell. Yeah. If you find actually that the tips are getting too burnt, put a little bit of foil on top. It'll stop the, the heat from hitting them directly on, um, but it'll still cook the inside. So if you're worried about them being slightly undercooked in the center, but that they're burning on top, just put a piece of foil and uh, it'll make it like tent it so that it's kind of like not touching them, but just kind of over top. Um, it'll make it so they don't burn on top, but that they still cook inside. Oh, oh, you can definitely smell them. You can smell them like yeah. minutes from when they because go in the oven. Because what happens, because you have that butter. So what's happening in the oven is basically the butter is melting, leaving those beautiful pockets of flakiness. Um, the steam is is rising and the baking powder and everything is helping it to like whoosh, turn into little little balls of joy. Um, so with that, that butter melting, you can definitely smell it. My kitchen living area is one room, so I'm on the couch, almost in the kitchen. That works. That's perfect. And I think, and the cinnamon sugar, like as soon as that hits the oven yeah. and the heat, yeah. it just, this nice cinnamon sugar smell. The, the house definitely smells very cinnamony and Oh, we, we have a Kestrel cooked ooh, ooh. picture. Okay, very nice. They're, they're looking pretty good. Yeah. I say they're a little bit pale, but if you think they're cooked, yeah. then that's poke, great. Poke it with a toothpick. If it's clean, maybe even sacrifice one. But they, I mean, they, actually, good. they don't look too bad. Yeah, they, it's they, hard for me to like. I'm far away from water, but and and the picture, like it's tips yeah. a little. If, if they're the kind of a medium golden brown, then I'm sure they're amazing. And I think that's the thing too is if you're planning on eating one now, anyways, just sacrifice one. If it's undercooked, put the rest back. He in. really loves sacrificing baked goods, you know, because then he gets to eat it when it falls <laughs> off the cooling rack. And you know you can't you can't serve that. So yeah, he really likes being in the kitchen for those last just couple of minutes of baking. Um, usually yeah, he's like, playing games, but he really likes being here for the last few minutes to be like, but can I sacrifice one? I think one needs testing. I oh, think I need to uh, make sure it's fully cooked. <laughs> I demand a sacrifice. I demand a sacrifice. Yeah, he's definitely all in on the sacrificial baking goods. A hundred percent. You gotta make sure it's cooked, right? You can't, you can't like wait till the next day. No, no, no. Uh, so I'm like, just over 10, I'm almost at 12 minutes. Like a puppy looking for fallen crumbs. So I'll just show you what they're looking at so far. Oh, actually, that's a good idea. <clears throat> so this is 10 minutes? This is uh, almost 12, because okay, I started 12. a bit late. Um, so they're getting a little bit brown, but they're still like a little bit squishy um, to the point where I think there might still be some raw dough on the inside. Um, that's really hot, so I'm just gonna put it down for a sec. So if you take it and just kind of like poke them. You should keep. Uh, they are still a little bit too squishy, so I'm gonna put them back in. Um, but it's a good kind of test to see how they're doing. You're not brown at all yet. That's okay. It's all up to your oven, right? Your oven is really making the the, um, the magic happen. And Kestrel, that actually makes sense because I think how they they keep the temperature is it overheats and then underheats and overheats and underheats. So that's why like ovens when they're not as good, the temperature fluctuates quite a bit. Nerdy cookbooks, yes. We're gonna have to go through that cookbook. You should show it up. 
Maybe not now because you're you have like a minute left, but <laughs> Julie, your oven door's open. Yeah. I, I didn't think I was gonna have them out that long, so I was just gonna be like show them and put them back in. Isn't it? It's like twenty five degrees every it's fine. like five or ten seconds or something. It's not a souffle, who cares? Even souffles, who cares? Even souffles. <laughs> it's fine. Everything's fine. Your bread takes ten minutes more in your current house than what you're used to. Yeah, and that's the thing is because I I haven't done as much baking here since we moved, um, only because slightly unclean. Okay, put them back. Put in. Put it back in. Um, yeah, because like a school, it's just too complicated. It, yeah. Um, so I haven't done as much in this oven. So sometimes this oven, I'm still testing to see. My other oven was like twelve minutes to the to the second. Turn off the oven, pop them in for one minute. Yep, Kesha, like that worked great. And yours got so tall, Jenny. Yes, I want to see them. Kesha, too. If you're worried about it burning too much, as I just tent a piece of foil over yeah. it. It works. Um, and if, if you want to turn your oven back on, I'm excited. But yeah, like ovens keep heat so so long that yeah. it, it's it's fine if the oven's on. Oh, uh, oven's so off. And it's great. The light actually turned off today. Yeah. Like one of the first times. This oven hates me. Of course. It's when we when we were like When we've talked about it, yeah. We were calling it out. So yeah. now it's gonna it's gonna act. Now it's properly. gonna behave because it's like, oh I'm on camera. I have to behave. We're gonna post okay. it her. I'm gonna her, check them again. You should look here first. <gasps> Star Wars. So so there's Star Wars, World of Warcraft, and the Elder Scrolls cookbook. Oh. And that's really funny because I bought my buddy that World of Warcraft cookbook for a um a secret okay. Santa one year. I'm going to take mine out. Okay. So I'm looking. I'm seeing that they're getting, uh, they're, this one's it's still a little bit tinier, so it's quite brown. Um, but I can see they're a little bit more firm when I push on them. Less give. Okay. Um, still a little bit. This one's a little bit. Maybe that'll be a sacrifice. We'll see. Um, twin just posted good. this picture. Yes. Twin, those look so good. They actually look amazing. They look so good. Yeah, to those, give. Those hey, and the really thing really is, good. they'll continue to cook a little bit while they cool. I'm not taking them off the uh, the cookie sheet right right now. I'm gonna let them sit a minute, then I will take them off um, to be able to cool on the cooling rack, um, just because it, it gives them a little chance to to first of all cool down, and second of all continue to cook a bit. The only thing I don't like about these is they're sometimes very similar and poorly edited, so not great with some of them familiar. Yeah, yeah that sucks. It's more about the the theme. Then oh, we, so got, good. we got a picture from Kestrel. Ooh! And she says they look the same, but, uh, but you did the, the toothpicks come out better. Perfect. And I think that's yeah because your oven was off. That's exactly what it would do. So that's yep. perfect. Um, and, and you should have just eat the scones. Yes. No, I didn't show up just to eat the scones. I'm also running the show. Okay. <laughs> Just because she's the pretty face doesn't mean I'm not important. So, uh, these have hardened a little bit. They're cooled down a little bit. I can now actually touch them without burning my hand off. So, I'm going to take them and move them to a cooling rack. You know this is a means. big boy. Oh, my goodness. This is a big boy. Holy cow. Yeah, we better make sure that that one's cooked. I think you... <laughs> I really want to eat one. ...should move. You know what you should do? What? Um, oh, do you need the other one? Uh, sure. I wasn't going to, but sure. Oh, what did you do in here? Yeah, I didn't put them away nicely, so. Yeah, that was rough. You know, the focus is having a hard time. Oh, is it actually autofocus? Oh, it's probably the top one. Look how convenient this cooling rack is. There we go. And now I can just, you're gonna touch that? It's not hot. Okay. I guess technically. Let's make it so you can see all of them. I want to see Jenny's. Can I see Jenny's? Oh, that's a good picture, too. Oh, Jenny, those look so good. That's such a fancy yes. picture. What is this? Those actually, yeah, those, those look really so good. yummy. I love the ones that like go like this and then just like flop over. <laughs> They struggled so hard. They just they couldn't grow so anymore, good. you know? Yeah. And I would suggest letting them cool a little bit before you delve into one. Um, you, you will literally they, send your mouth off. They are, yeah, they are hot. Because um, once you open them, they just like steam. Well, I, I, I mean, okay. I want to eat one, 
but we should actually open one to show what it looks inside. Yeah, I was going to. it is actually pretty actually, easy to tell when it's undercooked. We'll do that um, one because it's there. That's like the you want to get a little plate? Yeah, it's a little plate. Well, I'm not going to give you the big one right now. Here's a cutting board. I don't want you to have the big one. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah, you can cut it this way. Um, I'm going to cut it this way because I like because it Because she's better. a monster. No. Put it sideways. Yep, then all the sugar. Ooh. That looks pretty good. Yep. It's like a little soft on the inside. They probably could have had a couple more minutes, but. Yeah, it's a little bit under. They're okay. It's a little bit under. They're okay. Add some butter. You'll be fine. We Get have pictures. Another... Ooh, oh, look at that. Clean pan. Nice. Good That's job. a very nice twin. And then we have Jane. It just tastes elbow right? grease. I'm just. Okay, that's that's like the best cooling rack of all time. Can we just talk about this? Oh my! It's a roasting rack. It's a roasting. That's rack. amazing. That's amazing. Who was that? Twin. Amazing. That's amazing. Oh, this is what I get. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Mm mhm. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's cooked. Mhm. Mm it's not under, which is good, mm -hmm. and they'll continue to cook a little bit too. Yeah. So I think that's the thing is like, it it might feel just because it just came out of the oven, it might feel like a little bit more wet. Mhm. But it's still cooked. I like making it because I know what's in it. Right? Yeah. I like, I can put it, like, you know, things that I like, I can make it how I want. Um, and it tastes different fresh. But the thing is, like, a, oh God, a good, so good scone fresh. is really good. If you get a they're scone so from, like, a real scone place, they're so much. They're so good, as opposed to, like, the grocery store, right? But when it comes out of the oven and it's warm... It's the best. And I would say... Um, if you're heating up, like, like if you're eating in a couple of days, what I tend to do is put it in the microwave for like 10 seconds, like just enough to get it a little warm. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, or you like a toaster oven or an oven if you really want, if you don't have a microwave. Um, but just to heat it up a little bit and then put some jam or put some, like you, you, you said clotted cream, I've never had that, but, um, I love or I, I like putting butter on it. It's just, yeah, it's I a just, great little I breakfast. I just put some, some, some strawberry jam, mm -hmm. eat that for breakfast mm -hmm. or dessert. For snack, it's so good. For supper, eat it all the time, <laughs> every day. And in reality, once you've done it enough, it take. Stop touching them. Um, you it like it took me under an hour to make them. You you do the mixing. Well, the oven is the longest part, honestly. 15, okay. 20 minutes in the oven. Even 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 more impressive. Clotted cream and lemon curd on scones. Ooh. So, it two hours and 16 minutes was our stream start so we not only did we do everything from scratch teaching take mm -hmm. our time and yeah it i took, took my two time. hours so no Second excuse breakfast, snack no brunch. excuses 